Now, there's other shapes that can be formed too using these polar graphs. Another kind of shape would be rose curves. Um, and rose curves can have different petals. So I'm going to do an example in a second, but the way that the equations look is it's r equals a sine of n theta or r equals a cosine n theta. So maybe it's like two theta or four theta or five theta or something like that. Uh, if n is an even number, the rose has twice as many petals as the n. And if n is odd, it has that same number of petals. So for instance, let's say you had something like r equals a sine of two theta. Well, two is even, so it would have two times two, which is four petals. So this would be symmetric. Um, obviously, I'm drawing this by hand, but your rows would look like this. If you have three theta instead, so here's a cosine, but it's three theta. Because n is odd, it has exactly three petals, so it doesn't double. So one, two, three. If you have four theta, well, four is even. Four times two is eight, so you would have eight petals in your rows. And if it was a five, that's odd, so you would have five petals in your rows. Um, and A helps to give the length here um, of those, um, those petals and things. And uh, again, these should all be nice and symmetric. Uh, obviously, I'm drawing them by hand, uh, but they, they look pretty, uh, pretty awesome when you think about it, that uh, sines and cosines can make these kinds of graphs. So let's do an example. And again, I have it done out already. Um, so I can, I'll let you check some of the math at home, but I'll give you the key pieces here. So we're going to graph um, r equals four sine of two theta. And we can start with the symmetry test as well. So I'm gonna check the polar axis first. Okay, so we replace theta with negative theta here. So really it's negative two theta on the inside as well instead. Um, but again, that negative sign is not even and neither is sine of two theta. So that's going to come out. So this is not the same. So again, I just really don't know anything about if there is symmetry with the polar axis or not. We're not sure yet. I can test with the line, theta equals pi over two. So with this one, we're gonna replace both r and theta with their negatives. So I have negative r equals four sine of negative two theta. That negative is gonna come out. And those two negatives can cancel, right? If I multiply both sides or divide both sides by negative one, I have r equals four sine of two theta. Um, the equation does not change. So it is the same as the original. So we know we do have this kind of symmetry here for sure. So we're gonna see some sort of um, symmetry with that line pi over two. So it's like the y-axis line. So we have this left to right symmetry that we're going to see. All right, let me get a, another piece of paper here to continue. And I'm also going to check the poll. So here we just replaced the R. And you can tell right away, a lot of things you can do in your head for the symmetry, which is why, even though they take some time, it can be helpful because a lot of them like this one, you can just do in your head. Obviously, this is not the same. Um, if I multiply everything through by negative one, I still have a negative there. So this is not the original. Um, so again, we don't know about symmetry with the pole. I just can't be sure. So it's time to start graphing. Uh, I do know I have some left to right symmetry here. So that's going to be helpful. Um, and I can go ahead and start by some points and plugging it in um, as well. All right, so let's see, do table.
All right, so I'm going to start by going through zero to pi first for now. Um, this is a sine function, so technically I do have symmetry, or sorry, I will have repeated values after two pi. So I'm going to just do the first graph those and then see what I have, because I do know I have some symmetry, that left-right symmetry. So we'll see if we can use that or if we need to just keep finding more points. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in here. So I replace the first one with zero. And just be careful with simplifying. You do two times zero first, which is zero. And then now you could say, okay, well, sine of zero is zero. So I have zero from my first point. And I'm going to go ahead and continue with the rest. It's two times pi over six. If you're actually doing four times sine of pi over three here, right? So just be a little careful with your simplifying as you're going through. Um, and when you do all this, you're going to get about 3.46. For the next one, you're going to get 4. And then again, about 3.6, then 0, negative 3.46, negative 4, negative 3.46, and 0. Um, now, again, I'm seeing some similarities in points here, but I'm not seeing a direct same pattern, right? So I have zero and then 3.46 and then four, then back to 3.46. Now I'm at zero again, but now I'm at negative 3.46, right? So it's not quite the same pattern. So I don't have those repeats yet. Um, I am going to start the graph though, and then we can come in and going. And again, I know this is not to scale. I'm just kind of trying to do the best I can to get a quick visual here. All right, so I have my polar um, graph here. I'm going to start with one, two, three, four, and now I'm going to start plotting. So for the first one, I'm at zero, zero. Then I'm at almost four, and my angle is pi over six. So let's see, one, two, three. Uh, like three and a half, so about right here. And then I'm at pi over four and I'm at four. And then at pi over three, and then I, again, I'm almost at three and a half. And then I'm back at zero. So I start like this and I come back to zero. Um, at pi over two, I'm at zero. Then at two pi over three, I'm at negative 3.46. So I'm going to the other side here. And let's see, negative one, two, one, two three and a half about. And then at three pi over four, again, I'm at negative four. So I'm going to the other side here, one, two, three, four. And then at five pi over six, which is here, I'm at negative about three and a half. And then at pi, I'm back at zero. So I see this other petal forming like this. Now, I do have to complete this, right? Because I, I don't have that pattern here, but because I know I have symmetry with the line pi over two, with this line here, I have that left to right symmetry. So if I want to, I can continue making my table from um, pi now to two pi, or I can use that symmetry uh, and really mirror this image across because I know it is definitely symmetric with pi over two. Um, so that's that's one way that you can do it. So I'm going to go ahead and just try to use that symmetry here. One, two. Sorry, this point should be up here. Sorry, guys. It should be more like this shaped. That looks better. Um, so one, two, three and a half is right there. And we're at four. And then we're at three and a half again. So I'd have another petal kind of coming out this way, mirroring the top side. And then on the bottom side, again, I'm just going to try to mirror that 
22, three and a half. This one was at four and this one was at about uh, three and a half. So here again, I'm using symmetry to help me to complete the graph. But if you're not comfortable with that, just keep making your table through two pi and you'll be able to find those other petals. So here, notice that I had a two theta, two is even, and obviously two times two is four. So that's why I see something with four petals here for my graph. Now, these are pretty tricky to graph. Um, I will tell you that you can use technology to check your work, which I highly encourage. So let me go ahead and show you that. All right, just give me one second. I have to find where I put my Desmo screen. Let's try this again. Okay, so you should see my Desmos screen here. Uh, and you actually can graph polar um, equations, which is really great. Um, so first thing, you can make those circles on a polar grid if you want to. And what you do is you use R, R is for radius. So if I do like R equals one, R equals two, R equals three, R equals four, uh, and I can change those colors if you want to. So if you wanna make those all, let's say um, blue, you can go ahead and enter the colors and, and change things like that here. I think you go to settings, yeah, and I can change the color if I want to, uh, make them all the same color if you find that easier so it's not distracting. And then you have those circles. Now, obviously we're in um, the X, Y plane here. So you just remember that this would be your polar axis and this would be um, the line X, uh, pi over two. But you can also graph, so if I do R equals, and then I do four sine, and now I wanna do two theta. So what I'm gonna do is use my little keyboard here. And if you hit A, B, C, you will see a theta key uh, way on the right here. So I use that uh, theta, and actually I forgot my two. So two theta, and there is my flower. Let's make our flower a nicer color. How about red? And you can see there's your flower. So that's the what that's what we just scrapped by hand. Obviously, this is way easier, right? Uh, but it's a nice check. You don't see all those angles like we do on like the polar grid, right? So you kind of have to imagine them being there. Um, okay, this would be angle zero, angle pi over two, pi, three pi over two, et cetera. So you have to imagine that part. Uh, but you can still draw in those circles and you can still see that overall picture using R and theta. Desmos can understand the polar coordinates, which is amazing. Um, you can do with other technology too, you know, on the TI-8384 and, and things like that. But I just think this is so easy um, to do. So this is a great way to check your work, particularly with these graphs that are really hard. And um, it's hard to draw these shapes symmetrically, um, you know, circles, petals, curves, things like that. So this is a great tool that you can use um, to test out your work.